Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, our webinar. We managed to start up the, uh, the presentation um, and um, to have our speaker online. Unfortunately, his webcam is not working, so we will do without webcam, but he will still be able to give the speech to you, and you will see the slides, of course. Um, before we start, uh, let me um, give you some practical uh, instructions about this session. My name is uh, Eve Silver, and I work for Wetlands International. Um, we will be recording this session, and we will upload it online uh, afterwards, so you can also watch it back. Um, I will mute all the microphones except for the speaker. So if you have any questions, please uh, post them in the chat function on your right. And then uh, at the end, after the whole presentation, we will um, answer these questions. Uh, and after an hour and a half, we will close this webinar. So welcome and uh, good to have you here today. Um, I will give the floor now to Andrea Goltara, who will uh, also give a short introduction. Thank you, Eve. Good afternoon to everybody. For those who did not attend the, the previous webinars, um, my name is Andrea Goltara and I manage the Italian Center for River Restoration, which is an Italian NGO working since 1999 on sustainable management of rivers and river restoration in Italy. And we are one of the members of the Wetlands International Europe uh, family. So since in our work, uh, restoration of uh, ecological continuity of rivers is one of the key challenges, uh, we decided to organize jointly uh, the series of, of webinars. Uh, the idea is to promote the debate on that at the European and international scale and to uh, have the opportunity uh, to discuss these limitations, opportunities, good practices on these kind of measures with as a large community of practitioners, of NGOs, uh, of public, public officers. So this is more or less the the idea of these online conversations. Um, today we are getting into uh, let's say into a hot issue. Uh, so for us, for people promoting river restoration, uh, often we give for granted that restoring continuity uh, is a good thing. In general, uh, today with Gustavo, we will see that actually there are uh, objective limitations. So there may be reasons why uh, restoring continuity uh, on the one side is conflicting uh, with other goals, but in, there are also some cases where for the same objective of restoring better ecological conditions, it may or may be not a good idea to restore continuity. So I will now give the floor to, to Gustavo. Gustavo is a, a biologist uh, specialized in freshwater fish ecologies and, and fisheries management. Um, he's leading since 2003 an environmental management company called uh, Ictios and he has developed many projects on conservation and management of freshwater fish. And he also works as an assistant professor at the University of, of, of Leon and is a member of the Iberian Center for River Restoration, which is the homologue uh, association as ours in, in Spain and, and Portugal. So welcome to this webinar once again, and Gustavo, the, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Eve, thank you, Andrea, and good afternoon, everybody. So this is an overview of my take of today. First of all, I'm going to, to do a, an introduction to the matter. After that, a quick review of the European legislation about uh, both sides, the, the ecological, the recovery of continuity of the problem with, with the invasive alien species, some notes about the state of the art, a practical examples of the problems that we can find and the restrictions that we have to do, and ending with a 
review of the gaps of knowledge and the future the future challenges that we have in in this issue. Well, the, the ecological effects of transversal barriers are well known and are produced both by dams and by wars and mainly consist in reduction of the habitat heterogeneity that produce change in the thermal regimen, homogenization of flows, especially in the regulations dams, <clears throat> that increase the, the substrate the stability and also increase the nutrients and the sediment process on the rivers. Here on the bottom, you can see a typical uh, algal bloom produced by the increase in nutrients or, or an example of the problems of the sedimentation over the interstitial nodes. And here in, in this other picture, you can see an extreme case of a problem of the of incision due to a, a dam and as you can see the river is on the clays and there there are no habitat available and of course the transversal barrier produce habitat fragmentation what are the effects of this loss of connectivity on fish population one of the most important problems is the isolation of of the population that produce a loss of the genetic variation and increase the risk of, of, of extinction. We see in, in this graph, in the lower part of the screen, this is a model if for a population of, of salvelinos made by, developed by two Japanese research, Morina, Morita and Yokota, and is a, the model is for one century a natural evolution of a, an unisolated population on the lower part and unisolated population on the upper part. As you can see here, the adults of the population represented by points are more or less stable through the life history of the population in the and isolate population and this high fluctuation are due to the annual recruitment that as you know is uh, controlled by density independent factors such as flows temperature deep with the same model in an isolate population we can see that at the beginning the dynamic is similar to the to the unisolated population, but around 40 or 50 years of isolation, the number of adults start to decrease until extinction, until the collapse of the population. And here in this histogram, we can see the correlation between the probability of uh, that the population persists, of the survival of the population with the site of the river section with the carrying capacity. And as you can see, there are a strong correlation between the decrease of the carrying capacity and the risk of extinction. So this is one of the most important phases of the loss of connectivity. Also produce the loss of the natural dispersion of the population for then the loss of the possibility of recolonization of, of some river section and prevent individuals from moving to feeding areas or settled areas or to thermal refuse that is especially important in these new scenarios with the global warming. And of course, prevent or delay migration. The time and the energy that individuals need to overcome the different barriers along the, the river to to arrive to the spawning areas provoke that arrive late are in poor health conditions. So the benefits of eliminate these the unnecessary dams are obvious and solve all these problems that we commence. Recover the natural 
dynamics of the river. So we have natural flow regime, redistribution of sediments, improving of the natural dynamics. So renewal of dam, reconnecting floodplain and adjacent wetlands, and of course recover the continuity of the of the river, the recover of the longitudinal connectivity. So restoring connectivity, enhance migratory fish population, maintain genetic diversity, allow the, the organisms to access to these complementary habitats and facilitate the, the recolonization of an empty section of the river. So what we have to do is remove as much wares and dams that we can, but the recovery of connectivity also have a shadow side because can mobilize toxic or sediments with toxins that cause problems, facilitate the dispersion of parasites, disease, and alien species, and enable the hybridization between the isolated population and individuals proceeding for restock for restocking process. Then in sometimes the intentional fragmentation may be, be may be beneficial for the river when prevents to the spread of the alien species and disease eliminate this possibility of hybridization and stop individuals from entering ecological traps a classical exam example of that is the irrigation channels that at the end of the seasons will be dry and all the fishes that come in will die so sometimes fragmentation is not too bad. <clears throat> During the last year, the the number of of dam removal project has increased. Here is the example of what is happening in, in Spain. And until the the implementation of the national strategy of river restoration, as you can see in in the upper graphic all the the water basin authorities are working on this and some of them like duero is very active in in these works and also the number of fish passage and dam removals have been improving a lot from the the situation in the previous years to to the implementation of this strategy here around 2030, 2040, the crisis start to work and paralyze the works, but right now are a, a starting again. So if there are a lot of new projects on, on dam removal and recovery of connectivity, maybe it's time to make a reflection of the consequence of the shadow side of of connectivity recovery. We are going to have a look at what is the, the conservation status of the first water fish in Europe. So you can see the situation in, in the whole Europe and in the ambit of the European Union is quite similar and around the 40% of our species are threatened and a quarter of them are endangered or critically endangered. This is the general situation for Europe, but if we saw the regional scale, the situation is quite different in Northern Europe and in Southern Europe. The situation in, in all the Mediterranean arc is worse due to the number of endemic species is higher in the South of Europe than in the North of Europe. So if we take Spain, such an example, we can see that the situation here is worse than in Europe. The 85% of our species threaten it and near the 40% of them endangered or critically endangered. So conservation of native fish, especially in Southern Europe, is a big concern. If we see the, the distribution in families, we can see that the most important family in Europe are Cyprinids, with near the 50% of the living fish in, in Europe, living species of fish in, in Europe, 
are cyprinids, and near the 50% of them are endangered or critically endangered. What are the, the, the reasons of this situation? Okay, the major threats for freshwater fish in Europe after the problems with, with water, the quality of water or the quantity of water, are dams and invasive species, the two matters that we are talking today. And invasive species affect more species, more group of species that dams themselves. So we have to make a reflection about this before implemental projects of on river and recovery of, of river continuity. What is an invasive alien species? Okay, an alien is, uh, species is any species introduced outside the natural, its natural range that might survive and subsequently reproduce, but become invasive alien species when threatened or impact upon biodiversity or ecosystem service. So the process of invasion always is similar. First, there are colonization that could be successful or no, but if it's successful, it start the, the spreading process. And the, the most effective way to stop this is this roof connectivity. Let me, if the, the widespread produce start the, the serious impact on, on ecosystems, and then we have to try to isolate the invasive species. So in both cases, the first step of the, of the spread and when the invasion is uh, real, isolation of the invasive species is one of the first measures that, you, that we have to, to avoid. Okay. How is the important the, the problem of invasive species in, in Europe? As you can see here, in all Western Europe, is a hot spot for invasion. That means that at least the 20% of the composition of the communities in, in our basins are non-native species. So the risk of, in, of invasion, especially in Western Europe, is very, very high. <clears throat> Dams contribute fibers, the, the spread of alien species, because usually they are better at the, adapt, adapted to, to the new habitats that town creates than the native species. Here you can see the correlation between the number of large dams and the number of alien species in Spain during the last century. And it's a high correlation between the number of dams, of new dams, and the introducing of, Spain, of species. But not only the, the new habitats that the dams create favors the, the presence of alien or invasive alien species. Also the regulation, the change in the natural flow regime of the rivers favors the spread of, of the alien species. And this is a good example. This is the Isla, uh, the Isla Basin. Isla is one of the bigger tributaries of, of the Duero River I live here. And all the green lines that you see are regulate rivers. Well, in the 80s, pike was introduced here in this dam in the lower part of the Isla River and it started to colonize all the Isla Basin. Since then, Pike has colonized all the regulated rivers and some sections of the small tributaries where the conditions for the spawning of these species are very special, but know that the rivers with natural flows are not colonized by Pike. 20 years after the, the introduction of Pike, this section of the the uh, river, this port, receives a transfer of water from, from the river 
to for irrigation purpose in this area. And now they are using this section of the river as a channel for the transfer here at the end to other basin also for irrigation. So this, this section of the river now is working as a regulated rivers. And what happened with Pike then? The Pike also colonized this section. So this is a good example of how the change in the natural flows, regular flow regimes, favors the spread of the invasive alien species. And now the limit of distribution of pike in all these rivers are dams or small dams or wells. So here fragmentation helps to prevent the expansion of invasive alien species. Not always the invaders come from abroad. Sometimes the problems are with indigenous species. And this is what is happening here in Spain with the Tajus nays that live in the Tajus Basin, and you know, it's one endemic species, and the hooker nays that live in, in the hooker basin. There are transfer between, between these two basin and the Tajus uh, nays colonized all the, the Hooker and Segura basins, and now we have problem of hybridization and, comp and competition between both, and the Hooker basin are losing. And remember that also we have, we can find problems inside the same species with in wild individual and stocks uh, for for repopulation with probably with problems of in genetic introgression. And here I would like to ask your attention about the fact that when an invasive species provoke economic damage, the level of our of the general population and the concern of the authorities is bigger and there are public campaigns and educational programs as happened with the water hyacinth or with the severe muscle that everybody knows the problems about that but do you know any public campaign about the risk of the introduction of invasive alien fish i don't and even more there are angling association and even authorities in some countries that are promoting the introduction of a, a sport uh, fish that usually become invasive alien species. What say legislation about this problem? Okay, there are two main directives about that, the habitat directive, that specifically I say that the linear structure of such a river uh, need a special attention for conservation because they are essential for migration and genetic exchange of wild species, but also say that the member state has to prevent about the introduction of not native species in in their ecosystems. And if it's necessary, because there are risk of, of invasion, prohibit such introduction. So in the same directive, we found the two sides of the matter of today. The other important directive about the, this is the world Water framework directive that consider river connectivity and the hydrological, the natural hydrological regime as part for the achievement of the goods uh, of the good ecological status of the river, but also say that the composition of the fish fauna or the fish community must be natural or near to the natural conditions. And right now there are 
a more influence of the hydromorphological part of the water from world directive than with the fish. But it, both are at the same level. Also, there are regulations about the probation of and, and the management of invasive alien species. And the, the European regulation said that measures of restoration should be undertaken to, to fight against the, the invasion of, of alien species. And that prevention measure must be taken in account. Specifically say prevention for reinvasion, but always is easier and cheaper prevent the invasion than try to to control the invasion. And all those uh, regulations are transposed to to the national legislation. And for example, in Spain, in the Spanish National Catalog of Invasive Alien Species, say that any work in a river first uh, have to inform about the, the, press, the invasive alien species and take preventure measures to avoid the, the spread of them. And this, in, if this is impossible, the suspension of the project will be assessed. So with this, we see that there are regulations for both, but both are at the same level in, in the legislation and both are in conflict. So we have to decide, take measure in one sense or another. What is the, the state of the art? We are doing right now, we are preparing a report about this matter and the review that we are doing, we found few, few articles about the, this specific matter, the conflict between the recovery of the continuity of river and the risk of invasion by, by alien species. As you can see, the, the distribution of, of the papers are mainly in the US, we found three in, in, in Australia, one in South Africa, two in Sweden, one in Belgium, and six in Spain that belongs to, to projects that are carrying, uh, carrying out right now. But most of them only refer the problem, but don't analyze the consequence of the, of, or the measures to be taken. And more than, especially in the US, are carried out with salmon, with salmonids. And only in two cases we found works on cyprinids. I remember that it's the most important group of species in Europe. We found also eight reviews of the of this matter that all of them pose the the need to answer some questions before a, a start a, a project of recovery of connectivity. American Rivers and Trout Unlimited 15 years ago presented the, the first approach to this with some questions about the effects of keeping or removing a dam over the, the habitat and over the the fauna also. Recently, Faust uh, put something similar and he suggests analyze the problem from two points of view, the degree of isolation and the risk of invasion. So we can find four main situations. The worst of them is with high isolated the population and the strong presence of invaders. So here the solution is the intentional isolation, fragment the river to protect the, the isolated population. In the other 
outside the syntax network, but the interest for this talk is that the restore of connectivity it's only considered when the risk of, inv of invasion is very low. And when the risk of, of invasion is high, she proposed to consider temporary barriers, the temporal fragmentation of the river. This study is made with, it's carried out with salmon, with salmonids in, in the US, and they have uh, problems, especially with with restocked uh, population and other invasive uh, salmonid as our brown trout, but can serve as a model for a general situation. Rachel proposed something similar with optimal level of connectivity that goes to the complete connectivity to the complete fragmentation of the river depend of the ecological consideration, the presence of invasive species, species, the problems with the spread of disease or possible genetic uh, introgressions in front of the enhanced migratory possibilities or look for complementary habitats. And as you can see in the management act, uh, actions, propose something similar to the previous study, from remove the dams and improve the fish passage in the better situation, to maintain the, the barriers and even construct new barriers in the worst situation. And always we found a lot of situations that are in the middle and for that propose the develop of a selective a pass or any kind of seasonal barriers that can prevent the risk of, of invasion. As you can see at the end, the conclusion is that there are no recipes about the conflict between invasion by alien species and recover of continuity of river. The solution must take case by case, analyzing the different uh, parts of, of the matter in, in the different cases. This one is a practical example of, the, of that, that we found in this uh, life project, the life sea river, that try to protect and, and conserve a very principles of community interest. This life project is developing in the central western Spain in eight different sites of interest for conservation and involve seven species of fishes. All of them are endemic and three of them are endangered and four of them are vulnerable. Okay, in the different actions included in, in the LIFE project, there are the two ones that we are talking today, a protocol for action again invasive species and a program of habitat restoration that mainly consists in the removal of barrier and the construction of fish passage with the purpose to reconnect the different population of the target species that works as a metapopulation. Okay, at the beginning, we first performance the framework of the, of the rivers uh, included in the project and we evaluate the degree of fragmentation and we also did the initial diagnosis of the situation of the fish communities in, in this area. As you can see, it's a very fragmented, uh, fragmented uh, uh, rivers with 260 barriers in all the area of the of the life project and inside the sites of interest for conservation, there are 100 
and 62 barrels. So a lot of work to do. And we also compare the actual distribution of the target species, species with the situation 25 years ago, that is the last large inventory available. And as you can see in, in this map, the range of distribution of all of them are smaller than 25 years ago. And in some cases, like this, disappear in important sections of some of the rivers. Okay, we have noticed of the presence of mosquito fish, and in 2009, one individual of the Pomis gibosus of some fish was, was catched in, in the lower part of one of the river, but in in our samplings, we found three more invasive alien species in the area of the life project. Two especially dangerous for conservation of the small cyprinids, as the black bass, the Micropterus almoides, and the pike. And also we find the presence of Alburnus alburnus. So with the presence of this species, with a wide range of distribution, the, the plans of, of the restoration project has to change because the recovery of the, of the continuity in all rivers favors the, the, the spread of the alien species. So at the end, we decide to keep seven barriers to avoid the spread of, of the invasive species and plan two different kind of, of actions for the recovery of the, the connectivity on the river. On the upper parts of the upstream, the, the barriers, try to reconnect as much as is as we can the connectivity in, in rivers to favor the genetic interchange in the, between the different populations of the target species. And in the lower part of the, of the rivers, downstream the barriers, try to eliminate the, fav the favorable habitats for the invasive species. So, we work on this barrier that create artificial habitats that favors the presence of black bass and and pike and pike mainly. But this has two sides. If we, we don't recover completely the the continuity downstream the the permanent barriers. This is uh, this play against the recover of the other target uh, species, the the vulnerable one that mainly are nays and chav that are migrators and have to move in in these rivers to find the the spawning areas. But we have to decide between preserve the the population of the endangered ones or favor less the migratory process of the vulnerable ones. So as you can see, never are the perfect solution in problems that involve alien species and river continuity. Okay, so as there are no recipes, we are working in in something that help to decision making of what to do in in this case. And we think that before any problem, any project of, of recovery of, of, of continuity that involve alien species we should answer at least these 16 questions that you can see 
talk about the native species, the alien species, the interactions between them, and the presence, the, the presence of other factors that can help to decide if removal is the best or not and also some social consideration. And here in, in the table, we answer the both uh, ends of the line with the idea that you can check what is the most uh, closer to your situation. And at the end, you have a, gen a general idea of is it, if it's better removed or if it's better, keep the, the barrier. And the, the, this last question about the, the social point of view is because reservoirs, as we see before, usually are focus for of attraction of new introduction, especially the, the game fees, at least here in Spain. And talking about this social point of view, sometimes also there are a problem for for the implement the implementation of, of projects of connectivity recovery. Usually, when involve when involve a heritage that usually are all water mills like here or in the extremely case like in in this picture a castle with a mill over the river so here the the heritage regulation usually complicate a lot any kind of of solution to recover the the connectivity of the river but sometimes talking with the heritage authorities you can find solutions like here that this is part of the world of an all water mill that is included in the heritage list here in Spain. But talking with them at uh, with them at the end, we can make this fish ram at the end of the world that preserve all the structure included in the heritage, but possibilitate the the fish pass and the recover of, of the connectivity in in this case. So sometimes with passion and a little bit of imagination, you can find solution. Other times you can construct the bypass or use the old water, the, the, the old channel of the mill to use as a pass of the structure, but not always is, is easy. And in other case, you find a strong public opposition to the dam removal. This is an example here in, in the center of my town in, in Leon, with a weir that was made to, to protect this medieval bridge and then cause a lot of problems of sedimentation, as you can see here, and every four or five years, they have to drain each all the area, and four or five years later, the situation was still the same. But the most appreciated function of, of this world for, for the local population is not the protection of the bridge, is this new sheet of, of the continuous water that people prefer the, the continuous water to the natural regime of, of the rivers are more beautiful to place gardens and things like that. And here in, in Lyon was used by as a training camp for, for rowing. So there was a strong opposition of, of, lo of the local people and especially of the collectivity of the collectivity of, of rowers. 
But the problem is that Bernelga is a small river, but sometimes it's very brave with the high flows and the elevation of the of the level of water that produce this well produce a risk of flooding in this part of the city. So they have to to remove the the well to prevent the, the flooding risk. After a long, long process of public participation, at the end, <clears throat> two years ago, the, the well was removed partially, partially the, the, and right now, the medieval bridge is protected by the basement of the, of the world that is still on the river. But as you can see in the picture, the dynamics of the river is completely different. Recover the natural dynamic. There are sediments mobilized. The water quality has improved. So the, the social opposition with a a lot of, of explanation and public participation at the end could be solved. And to finish, a, an overview of the gaps of knowledge and future challenges that we have in, in this conflict between the risk of invasion and the recovery of the continuity. <clears throat> We have to learn more about the interaction between the invasive alien species and the threatened species in order to, to identify approach that may be compatible taxa such as the spore feces and the threatened feces. And to this, as uh, Rahel pointed out, we have to find methods to maintain the hydrological connectivity while we block the biological connectivity. For that, we have learned more about the abilities of invasive, of invasive alien species to overcome, to overcome obstacle in order to develop selective barriers and fish ladders that permit the the normal, the complete uh, live uh, cycle of uh, cycle of our native species, but avoid the spread of the invasive species. And overall, we have to do more long-term monitoring because it's the only way to learn about where, what are we doing well and what are we doing worst in in this conflict and thank you very much and i will be pleased to hear your comment and your question okay thanks a lot uh gustavo for the presentation um and um for the clear uh story that you were telling us i would like to invite all the participants to post their questions they have any in the chat function in the panel, then I can uh, read your question and Gustavo can answer it. Um, I see already a question coming in from Nareth. He says, can dam removal recover the damaged ecosystem and the loss of species in numbers? The dam removal depends on if we have invasive species or not. If we, if we have an invasive species, the recover of connectivity always helps to recover the, the ecosystem and the natural community of it. We have some very nice examples here in, in the monitoring of the, the dam removal of big dam, 15 meters high, that in three years, the structure of the of the community, especially the macroinvertebrates, macrophytes, is the same that uh, with the with the control stations that we have is the same in all the river and in the the number and the composition of the fish community are increasing very very fast. 
So river is, the resilience capacity of the river is very high, and if you take out the, the impact, the recovery is quite, uh, quite fast. The problem is if, the, if you have invasive species and the dam removal favors the, the, the spread of invasive species. So you solve one problem, the isolation, bad change, but a problem, in my opinion, worse, that is the presence of invasive species. Okay, thank you. And can you move a bit closer to your microphone as just to get softer? Okay. Yes, that's better. Okay. Mm -hmm. While waiting for further questions, I have one for Gustavo. Um, do you have any specific experience on the selective fish passes that you, you mentioned? Um, so positive and negative cases and uh, were they mainly related to uh, structural selectivity so in the design or also in the management so like active management of the fish passes so batch passes in order to physically remove the species that you would like to well, not to be connected to upstream Okay, I think that one of the challenges that, that, that we have is, first of all, learn more about the, the, the capacities of the alien species to overcome obstacles, because they are start to, to, to be words about the, the, the overcome capacities of our native species, but there are nothing about the, the alien species. And the behavior of one species in the natural habitat and when becomes to be an, an invasive species is completely different. A, a good example is the behavior of brown trout in Europe and the behavior of brown trout in the US, for example, where it's, it's one of the most important invasive species. And the problem, my experience said that if a fish pass is selective for one species, are going to be selective for target species or some life stage of the target species too. So right now, as far as I know, the fish pass are good for all species or bad for all species. So I think that is a, a challenge and a important field of work of designer of fish pass working in this kind of selected fish ladder. But at the moment, my experience said that the classical design don't solve the problem. Thank you. I also have a question uh, for you. Um, when you are looking at a case of either removing the dam or keeping a dam, um, in your experience, have you done a cost-benefit analysis on the pros and cons of the dam removal or keeping the barriers? Yeah, I think that this is the, the next step. And at the end, in any single dam removal project, we have to consider all these questions, not only that I propose today about the only in the relativity of the risk of invasion or not, but the cost-benefit analysis, I think that is very important to do. And for that reason, in the table, we put one of the questions that is about that. If the obstacle causes high synergic effect and the elimination would be very beneficial for the entire basin, Oh no, because a lot of time we spend the, this balance of cost benefits is not uh, not to, um, the, the result is not that uh, that we can expect. This list of um, of uh, factors that you have to keep in mind, um, I see uh, for this case some of the 
uh, factors were checked and um, are they all equally important or is this also dependent on the case? I think that depends on the case and and there is not black or white. So we are working on, on this right now and we hope to to at the end have a something that really was useful for that. But as you see is in, in this uh, table are the, the two ends of the line, but there are a lot of intermediate situation. So maybe instead they check on the right or on the left, you can note points on the right of the left. Yeah, at the end, the zoom could be different. And there are factors that are more important than others, but depend on the case, it depend on the characteristics of the river, the the invasors that we have, the species, if the community that we have is very threatened or not. So I think that it's a great scale of grace in, in these questions. Yes, I can imagine. We have a message from Lisette who says, thank you for this great idea and I will keep coming back for future presentations and thanks to the speaker. Um, we have a question from Ron Jones who says, uh, Matt uh, Chu, 2015, says we risk overemphasizing the real impacts of alien fish species. Is this a real risk? So? But the question is, if we uh, if if we are overemphasizing the real impacts of alien fish species, I don't think so. At least in in the rivers uh, where I'm working with an alien species, an invasive species appear, the community changes completely. For example, with the the case of pike, that. Uh, I saw it before. Before the the pike, the we have nine different species in in the basin. After the pike, there are two: pike and gudeon, nothing else. So the change is really great. I think that maybe in some case we can overemphasize, but I don't think that is the normal way. It's a great risk, really. May I? Add up a second on that. Probably Gustav, it's also a matter of what are the chances to restore, for instance, hydromorphological pressure factors that are supporting alien species versus uh, autochthonous ones. So it may be that in some cases, if together with the dam removal or reconnection, we can also restore more natural hydromorphology in the reconnected stretch, it may be that depending on the species, the risk of reconnecting becomes lower. But of course, it's a, yeah. it depends on the specific context. And as, uh, as I said, one of the factors that favors the, the presence of, of alien species if the the artificial flow regime so if we can recover the natural flow regime recovering removing dams this also is a factor of recovering of the total system so depends of the species the case is yes no recipes <laughs> We have a question from Nareth who asks, um, can you raise one example, a case of a recovered ecosystem after dam removal? I think you showed us examples in your presentation. Maybe you can quickly uh, highlight it, maybe briefly repeat an example. Well, here the, about the, the conflict between alien species and and recover of connectivity. The the only examples that in where we are working is here in in the Sea River Life Project, and we are still working. We hope to 
to have results next year or in a couple of years. And the rest of monitoring that they do is only monitoring of done removal projects without invasive species. And in this case, the recovery is spectacular. And the results of uh, this project, they will be published online, I suppose. Yes, on the web of the of the project, of the live project. Yeah. We have a question from Cedric who says, do you think there could be ways to increase the mortality of invasive species so that their pressure on the ecosystem would be less on the threatened species? Or would such a regulation be useless? Okay, here with, with the, the case of Pike, uh, the, I posted, they tried, the, the, uh, the fishing authorities tried to increase the, the, pressure, the fishing pressure over the, the, the pike and also complementary campaigns of removal individuals from the river was made and the population decreased and the situation started to, to be better. But in an open system, in an open system like a river, it's quite impossible to eliminate all the individuals of one species. So, depend on fertility, in three, four, five years, the problem is targeting. Um, we have Ron who says, thanks to everyone. Very good presentation. And I see no other questions at the moment. So if there's no more questions, uh, how about you, Andre? Or even if any, if any attendant has uh, examples that they want to, to discuss with us, maybe it's also an opportunity, even if it's not a question. Yes, and, and also in, in a question like this, with so few information, any case new that we can add is very important because there are very, very few works on this. Yes, yeah, so I think this is a request also to everyone here. Um, if you have any examples or any relevant information, please share it with us and note that the presentation slides and this webinar will be uploaded to the Wetlands International European website, which is europe.wetlands.org. So you can always uh, watch it again later. Um, Nerit is asking, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like invasive species are of more concern than, uh, than dams. Depends on cases, but in general, the, the red list of European freshwater fish said that invasive species affect and threaten more species than dams. In this sense, are more concerned, but in any particular case, you have to evaluate this, all the, the points of view and, and decide what is worse and which one of them give you more benefits for the restoration of the situation. But in general, maybe I work on fish, so I always push to the fish side. But I think that in, usually in, in the restoration projects, it occurred the opposite. That push more on the hydromorphological restoration. And we have to find a balance be between both sides. So consider also fish in the restoration project and consider also the hydrological recovery of the river in the control of invasive species. Okay. I don't see any other message coming in. 
So in any case, even if you have issues coming up at a later stage, feel free to contact us. So we will still be there, and we will be very happy to to discuss with you any any further issues that may that may be be raised. Yes, and tomorrow we have two webinars on dam removal. So um, please join us if you're interested in uh, in the technical um, and also the legislative side of dam removal. We have two speakers, one from Europe and one from the US. So we're happy to, to have you there as well. Um, so I see a message saying thank you. And um, I think... Um, we can close the, the meeting with this. Thanks everyone for he being here and for your questions. And we hope to see you again. And thank you, Gustavo, for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you to everybody. Thank you to you for, for the invitation. And thank you, Eve and Andrea. See you. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.